All humans have the same set of genes. Our differences come from the tiny variations in those genes, and one of the more common and potentially dangerous variations is known as an MTHFR mutation. This video explores what implications it may have for your health and diet. Hey everyone, my name is Joe Leach. Today we're looking at what you need to know for MTHFR mutations, symptoms, and diet. It's based on a much more in-depth article on dietversdisease.org, which you can check out now or later. So what is MTHFR? Uh, it's short for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which I admit I did have to practice a couple times before I recorded this. Uh, it's a very important enzyme in the body. It's necessary for methylation to occur, which is a metabolic process that switches genes on and off, repairs DNA, and loads of other important things in the body. Now, this methylation process is also essential to convert folate and folic acid, which are both forms of vitamin B9, into their, their active, usable form in the body. That's why it's so important. Okay, so this diagram shows how complex methylation can be, in this case to convert folate and folic acid into their active form, which is called 5-MTHF for short. So you can see at the top of the diagram is folic acid and ditrofolate, and this is the methylation cycle, and at the very bottom is the active form. Now just above the uh, active form there you can see MTHFR, which is the enzyme, is required for that last step there. So without it, uh, you will not get the conversion of folic acid or folate into the active form. And that's where the MTHFR mutation comes in. So the MTHFR gene triggers the production of MTHFR enzymes. Roughly 30 to 50% of us carry a mutation in that gene, which is passed down from our parents. The two main functional mutations, they're also known as polymorphisms, of this gene are C677T and a 129 HC. Now, specifics aside, these genetic mutations are collectively known as MTHFR mutations. Now, they can be like a, um, a sort of defect which limits production of your MTHFR enzymes and can cause a problem in that methylation process of vitamin B9. Now, remember that most people with a mutation actually remain unaffected and, and don't experience symptoms, but for some, enzyme efficiency can drop down to between 30 to 70 percent of normal depending on the variant of the mutation. And if you're watching this, then you probably suspect something is up with yours. Um, just note that there are a lot of genetic mutations that can potentially hinder methylation. An MTHFR mutation is just one of many, but it's the most well-researched and, and likely the most important. That's why we're, we're going over it here. As we've established then, those with an MTHFR mutation are at a risk for poor conversion of folate and folic acid into the active form, which is known as 5-MTHF. The problem is then that those nutrients can't perform one of their key functions, breaking down or recycling homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is an amino acid thought to damage the lining of your arteries and other cells of the body, which contributes to cardiovascular disease. It's naturally formed in the body, but it's meant to be broken down or recycled by 5-MTHF. Elevated homocysteine levels in the blood is an independent risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and many other forms of cardiovascular disease. It's also been linked with a range of other health problems, including macular degeneration, uh, Alzheimer's disease, hearing loss, and cancer. A lack of active folic acid alongside a low folate diet can also lead to folate deficiency, which has major health implications on its own. Therefore, those with a bad MTHFR mutation are more at risk for increased serious health problems if the issue is not addressed and their diet is not rich in folate, which we'll go over soon. Considering that genes are influenced by our diet and environment, many studies are also able to find a link between MTHFR and a particular disease process or disability. Now this ranges from cancer risk, Down syndrome, to autoimmune diseases, to autism and more. Uh, however, it's difficult to pinpoint MTHFR mutation as a a direct risk factor. Like there are compilations of research out there. The main one that comes to mind is Dr. Ben Lynch's, who for the record is a naturopath, not a medical doctor. But the studies I've seen are, are inconclusive and not all the research is listed, I find. The reality is overall evidence for these health claims is pretty weak and MTHFR mutations are unlikely to be a direct causal factor of those health conditions. But I think when it comes to cardiovascular health and vitamin B deficiencies, then the risk is very real. Now, it's really important to note that an MTHFR mutation itself is not inherently dangerous, but any form of genetic variance has a possibility to affect your health. This is just one of many. Now, if you believe you might have an issue, there's no way to know for sure without getting tested. 
in saying that though there's some trending uh, sort of MTHFR symptoms if you want to call them among those that have a defect that could warrant uh, a test an MTHFR test now the symptoms to look out for would be high homocysteine levels so that can be caused by poor methylation as we went over before now if you have a folate deficiency so if you're deficient in folic acid which is folate another form of folate then this could be linked to MTHFR and it's worth checking out common symptoms include uh, extreme fatigue lightheadedness and forgetfulness um, if you've had many miscarriages so some practitioners recommend testing for MTHFR mutations if you had one or more miscarriages, uh, long-standing gastrointestinal issues such as irritable bowel syndrome could be could be um, a reason to get tested. Now, autoimmune diseases, if you have one, this is based more on anecdotal evidence than solid science, but you could check it out. Same with anxiety and depression. Okay, so what about nutrition and diet recommendations? Well, I'll start by saying the importance of folate cannot be overstated. So that's why MTHFR symptoms warrant such concern in the first place. Um, while more folic acid, which is synthetic vitamin B9, is not desirable, which I get to in a second, we definitely want to eat more folate, which is natural vitamin B9. Um, this is especially true for those with an MTHFR defect, because more folate in the diet means more opportunities to create the active form, which is 5-MTHF. In case you're wondering, the, the body easily recycles leftover folate into a harmless compound, whereas it cannot do so with folic acid. So without getting into all the details, that's why folate doesn't accumulate in your blood, but folic acid does. And that's why an MTHFR mutation, maybe someone with an MTHFR mutation should be weary of folic acid, but not so much natural folate. The best sources of folate per 100 gram serving are beans and lentils, raw spinach, asparagus, romaine or cos lettuce as we call it here in Australia and broccoli, avocado and oranges and mangoes have a little bit as well. Now the RDI is the recommended daily intake so 100 gram serving of, of lentils or legumes for example is, is half of your recommended daily intake. Same with raw spinach and so on. Now if you still weren't convinced uh, as to the importance of dietary folate, well studies have even shown that a folate rich diet can match the homocysteine lowering effects of either a regular folic acid supplement or a, a 5-MTHF supplement. So as though we needed any additional reasons to eat more vegetables and legumes, but there's another one for you. Now there's, there's also a couple of other important nutrients to think about with folate metabolism, namely vitamin B2 and vitamin B6. Uh, you can find out more details of them in the article. I won't, go into, I won't go into that here. In terms of what foods to avoid, it's commonly thought that antacids, some blood pressure medications, um, at form of type 2 diabetics, even contraceptives, I think, may all inhibit dietary absorption of B vitamins to some extent. But if you regularly take these, you should definitely seek personalized health advice from your doctor before you make any changes. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. I've got loads more information on the topic if you want to click the link, uh, particularly on the potential risks of using folic acid supplements, MTHFR and implications for pregnancy, which uh, kind of tie together, I guess, and where you can get tested as well. Um, just remember that genetic testing is only a tool to support you in better health though, like having a genetic mutation does not necessarily mean it will affect you. Uh, as they say, Genes load the gun, environment pulls the trigger. Uh, oh, and eat more folate rich foods. Uh, that, that goes to everybody. So loads of scientific references can be found in the original article. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave me a comment in the section below. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video and are looking for more ways to take back control of your health, you can subscribe to the Diet vs. Disease channel or head over and get the freebie I got for you in dietversdisease.org. So uh, until next time, here's to honest and hype-free health advice. See ya.